Christopher. Good to see you again. Yeah, David. It's uh, nice to connect again. And uh, how are things doing there in California? Is it still cold? Well, uh, Jimmy Kimmel did a good joke on his show last week about the news, uh, you know, articles and the news segments they're doing about the cold here, about how people don't know how to handle 60 degree weather here. <laughs> so, you know, we don't have gloves and we don't have mittens and um, we don't know what to do in the cold. We go, you know, we go a little crazy here. So um, it's been chilly for for my aspect of cold. I mean, 40s in the night, and yeah, it's been cold. Well, yeah, we had uh, I think it was like seven below zero at dawn this morning when I got up. Um, wow. So, but it did rally. So we're back up into more agreeable range of temperature tonight. And, Good. So anyway, what are your thoughts on this coming week? We're starting off with a Friday the 13th, and uh, hopefully the myth of Friday the 13th won't uh, prevail during the day. People will get through the day without uh, having, uh, who was it, uh, the, the guy with a hatchet or the hockey mask show up? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think uh, the guy, uh, Fr uh, what's it called, Freddy or uh, uh, one of the, oh, Jason, Jason from Friday the 13th. Yeah, Jason and his hockey mask. So, yeah. Uh, well, uh, that that might appear, though, on the 17th with uh, Uranus getting ready to do its happy dance, too. Yeah, I think we're on a build-up here. Um, I think we're coming into a very interesting zone as we step into Friday with the moon in Taurus, which... I think it's important to have a moon in Taurus as we step into our weekend because we're grounding ourselves in our value systems and with all this Sagittarius Sun and Mercury energy that's starting to get closer as Mercury has really caught up speed, there's a lot to understand in our life. There's a lot to grow with. There's a lot of you know new observations that I think we're wanting to step into and it's this moon in Taurus and this energy that's kind of around the chart that's about us grounding and seeing what's important to, you know, set our intentions in or open our minds to. I think it's important for us to ground in a lot of what's what's solid and what's worth even wasting our time with or not. Well, yeah, and especially as the moon continues to progress through uh, Taurus because we're going to watch it oppose Saturn and uh, get a final little zig out of Saturn, I think, uh, over the weekend. Um, I think that's going to come up as discernment. I think a lot of people are going to uh, make some final decisions. You know, do I want the, the blue Mercedes or do I want the red Mercedes, that sort of thing. Um, because Saturn is, you know, right now in Scorpio and it's in that mid-range and it's, uh, it's ready to make some solid decisions as it gets ready to advance and move forward and head towards Sagittarius. It is. It's it's a very interesting position for Saturn to be as it trines Jupiter in Cancer, and and this is a solid placement. This is a multi-year fat, you know, placement. Saturn and Jupiter did this this trine at the beginning of the summer, and then it's going to do it in May of next year. So this is a wider angle of of us really having to open our feelings and and for us to do something solid with these feelings, you know. And that's why I think this moon in Taurus is important as we come into the weekend as it's only time to open our feelings into things that we can maybe manage with. You know, it's, it's not important for us to be emotional over things we can't do anything with. You know, the Saturn energy makes sure that we're focusing very specifically on the correct emotions to take, to take off in the right directions with, especially with the Sagittarius energy that's about growing and optimism and, and learning no more can you be crying about things that aren't worth crying for anymore. No more you can you invest emotionally into things that aren't tangible or or that's going to make some sort of achievement out of it. So this is a multi-year or it's a one-year transit really, but it's a multi-long uh, story that over this last six months and for the next six months, I think there's a lot of powerful projects, a lot of powerful you know, feelings inside that we're trying to make something of. And this energy is picking up at this time period for a reason. It is. And uh, it's 
going to be enshrined to uh, good old Pluto sitting there in Capricorn that has been uh, really, you know, coloring our world for quite a while now and is going to continue for a number of years. And every time we have interaction with the moon and the sun and uh, the inner planets as they're aspecting the Plutonian aspect, it, it creates a kind of a bond. It unites us with our humanity. It, it unites us with our fellow man. So I think we'll see camaraderie as one of the themes that comes up over the weekend. And uh, I think that's going to play out very nicely also. So we've got you know, Saturn in a nice uh, position there in, uh, in good old Scorpio, 8th house energy. Pluto sitting up there uh, on the midhaven in the 10th house in Capricorn and Taurus in the 2nd house. Uh, helping us uh, refine our ideals, uh, helping us to refine our value system. So overall, I think it's going to be uh, kind of a warm, fuzzy weekend. But then uh, the moon slides into Gemini and starts uh, a trine with Mars um, in Libra and interacting with Uranus in Aries. So yeehaw. Yeah, and we're going to have a full moon in Gemini. And uh, this full moon is a, is a very powerful one because it's happening before this, you know, this Uranus uh, big T square that's starting to form and Uranus coming direct, you know, like you brought up the 17th, Uranus is going to come on. This is a big electric storm that's about to come on and really unpredictable energy. And with Mars interacting with this and, and with this full moon that's building, I think that there's a lot of our perceptions and these value systems because Venus as well is at a stationary position. It's only going to go one more degree before it goes retrograde. So Venus is pretty much stopped. This is um, a really weird zone to, of pre preparation this weekend and into this week, and then we get these powerful energies to come in to rearrange our perceptions correctly because I think it's a ticket into this new world that we're all going, and where, what the destination is is off your perceptions, what your mind, your belief structures are setting itself up for here this weekend and into this full moon that really gets powerful Sunday into Monday here that it really is about triggering these, these correct perceptions, which are the ticket to your next journey. And you've got to pay attention to these because we're about to really step into something powerful here. And you're going to want to have the right ticket. You're going to want to have your perceptions in the right place. You're going to want to value things that aren't dead weight, I'm calling it, because a lot of us are going to jump on the wild horse and you're not going to want a backpack full of crap you know, you want to be fancy free and only bring with you something, something that's worthy, uh, a plan in your a consciousness that's ready to explode. So when you jump on this new wild ride, you do something with it. You, you hop over the fence and you maybe go to the place that you've always wanted to go. Well, and, and interestingly enough, we're watching this kind of a cluster of uh, somewhat exotic energy because we've got air signs involved, we've got fire signs involved, we've got Uranus uh, interacting with the Sun and Mercury, we've got it interacting with uh, Mars and Libra, uh, the Moon will be in Gemini going full, so there's a huge amount of fire air energy and I find it uh, oh, somewhat uh, curious as to how this is going to continue to affect us because this is also getting ready to manifest on the eve of the solstice. And uh, when we hit that counterpoint where the days start getting longer, we, we bring the colors, we bring the influences of, you know, the previous full days, uh, full moon days and, and uh, sun's position as it shifts over into Capricorn. So it's going to be kind of a, an advent um, that is going to have some, I think, some positive and, and remarkable overtones for the nature of 2014. It's going to influence the solstice and it's going to influence uh, relationships especially and it's going to influence our fortune, our destiny. Uh, that 10th house energy is where it's all going to manifest. Yes, it is. And, and this... Sagittarius Gemini access full moon is about change. 
You know, that mutable energy is about change, and it's change of the mind, it's change of your observations, and it's amazing how powerful our mind, our belief structures really are, um, and, and the change that we can make in our life based off these placements. And it is the trigger of the Uranus direct energy, because literally on the 16th and the 17th is when the full moon is official, and here it is, then, you know, right after the full moon, Uranus turns on. So this is... This is kind of the calm before the storm weekend, and then you step into this week, and there's going to be a lot of energy brewing, and then right after that, here's Mars coming in to oppose Uranus, and this can be very intense, very masculine energy, meeting in the fireball energy that's just turned on. I think that this is going to be a lot of pressure in people's lives to start taking actions into, you know, your destiny, just like you brought up into the correct identification. And we're going to start to see this relationship game that you just brought up, which this is going to be a new game we're stepping into, a new karmic zone as Venus is at 28 degrees, and we're going to be pretty much a week away from it turning. And that solstice period you brought up, this is all leading towards that solstice period with the Mars opposing Uranus, with Mars squaring Pluto, with Venus going retrograde. And it's about a new chapter. We're about to step into a new chapter. And this one's going to last a long time um, because we're going to have Mars and Venus. They're going to start being in cardinal signs and square off. Mars is going to get ready to come into a shadow period soon. And, you know, if you look at ahead in the astrology, it's the first week of March that all this energy finally kind of turns gears as you know, Venus will leave Capricorn, Mars will go retrograde, Jupiter will come back on. So this is the beginning of a new portal into a three-month adventure that I'm seeing us enter. Oh, absolutely. And I think that it's going to be um, a, a paradigm shift that we can actually visibly uh, perceive in our surroundings. Uh, mm. The last couple of years, I've noticed the intensity of the sky and uh, the intensity of clouds, you know, things like that. I, I have always been inclined to look upward during the day as well as at night. And I am seeing something happen in the heavens that is, um, th that is unique. It, there is something going on that we haven't fully identified yet. And I think that this solstice is going to see another shift in the light. The light is going to come through from a different angle. It's going to come through with a different intensity uh, simply because we're getting, you know, more and more entrenched in what was identified as a Mayan shift or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. But I think we're moving uh, forward with that kind of... Uh, transformative energy so I think a lot of people are going to come out of 2013 and move into 2014 with a different sense of what the world holds for them and a different sense of what the color and context and texture of their life is all about yeah it's all about this weird change that you describe especially I mean the weather's a good way to look at it um, energetically but this outer world I think is going to is going to turn on more when Uranus comes direct. Uranus deals with very you know unique energy and extreme wild change. And I think we've been so deep in this inner world and trying to figure out our insides that it's almost like God turns the light back on with this Uranus energy and this pow with the Mars energy in Libra and it's going to be a pow that comes in. And a really wild holiday. I think this is going to be a, a really intense kind of vibe. I think it's been a little, I'll be honest, a little boring, a little, uh, even though it's been so intense inside. I think in our outer worlds, you know, it's been kind of flowing and, and going, but th this is a, a, a big spark to the reality, a big jolt. And I think we're all going to feel this jolt and it's going to be uh, a turn, you know, a turn on in people's lives. Like, okay, wow. I need to get going again. I need to do something. This is interesting that during the holidays where we usually want to relax, you know, the universe is almost pressuring us to go. It's interesting. Yeah, it, um, we're carrying the Sagittarius energy well into Capricorn. It is going to be 
uh, a travel-oriented time, and I think that uh, there's a wanderlust that is starting to build already. I'm noticing with some of my clients that they're talking about traveling uh, during a time frame when they're normally entrenched at home. So, uh, yeah, the, everything is getting stirred up, and I think Uranus is the uh, release point, and I think it's very important. But I also think that, uh, you know, as we're watching uh, Neptune begin to actually figure out what it's going to do, uh, we're going to see some, uh, some, uh, another cycle of this intense dreaming, intense intuitive flashes. Uh, I think that's going to carry us through the holidays and it's going to be kind of fun to see how that manifests in the collective consciousness because uh, on, uh, on the uh, Facebook page that you've set up there we've had quite a bit of discussion about dream cycles mm -hmm. and uh, the Neptunian effect, the Uranian effect uh, the Plutonian effect, and I think all three of the, the heavy planets are really going to continue to fuel dreams, uh, hunches, uh, deeper feelings bubbling up to the surface, and intuition. Yeah, that's Neptune definitely uh, going to see that power come in as Neptune finally has come off its stationary position and starting to free up and it's going to be much more an, um, of an imaginative journey than I think we've ever gone through in our lives, especially in 2014 as it advances much deeper into all this Pisces energy. And it's interesting now that Neptune's – it's come off a lot of the planets. The one thing that's starting to build though with Neptune is the nodes, as the nodes are starting to connect here. And this I think is going to be a key ticket – as Jupiter and Saturn start to break off at the end of this week, I mean, already, it's amazing. They were at 18, now Jupiter, Jupiter's at 17, and Saturn's at 19. So this kind of energy breaks of us really having to pick the right feelings out to build something off of, and now the imagination begins to take those things into the right energies as we're forced by the universe to make some cardinal energy, which is season starting energy, to take initiative, to begin things, to, to move forward and to, to identify and, and to be planned with and to be destined with and to build new relationships and explore our feelings because we end the end of this week with, you know, the moon passing over Jupiter, trining Saturn, you know, trining Neptune, opposing Venus before it goes retrograde. And this is a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot yeah. to it's a lot to handle and it's a lot to observe too. Exactly. And and whenever you're in those early degrees, you know, uh, that's when um, things are, are re being redefined. And like you said, you know, we've got the nodes in the early degrees, the three degrees of Scorpio and three degrees of Taurus. So as they continue to move backwards in advance to the fire-air offset, uh, we're going to see things definitely come up uh, on the realm of karmic payback and karmic payoff because when the nodes do finally slide into that Aries-Libra uh, polarity, they're definitely going to put the highlight on individual egos and collective ego and, and how we're manifesting our own destiny here. So all of this stuff is definitely building uh, and intensifying and it's going to play out um, through the nodes as they start to make those final couple of degrees uh, out of the uh, out of the earth water energy into the fire air energy. Yeah, this is going to be a powerful shift of 2014. Um, much different, but lots of, I think, I guess the similarity of 2013 to 2014 that's brewing is there are mass changes that are going to continue. Just different stories, still a deep inner world that's changing, but I think the nodes getting out of you know, Scorpio Taurus is going to be felt extremely for a lot of people. And, you know, as we leave this week, at the end of this week, you know, we leave, 
we leave getting ready for a solstice change and there's a little in between window after such big changes that we begin that following next weekend with more. <laughs> I mean, it's like, um, so, you know, it's interesting that the energy just is in a huge ramp up once we get off the beginning of this weekend that we start this week. Exactly. Yeah. And that full moon is definitely going to be, um, you know, the, the intensity of that moon is going to be something that uh, is going to be very pervasive. I, uh, I found it interesting that when the moon went through Aries just a few days ago, that uh, I and a, probably a half a dozen other people that I had dialogue with over the 24-hour period were very, we were very much aware of the electrical quality of what was going on because, um, you know, it was first interacting with Mars, so you got a jolt of energy there. Then it's uh, interacting with uh, Uranus, and, and it's pulling the Mars energy into the Uranian region. And uh, nobody was getting any sleep. You know, I was up for like 30 hours nonstop, and I think quite a few other people were feeling that ziggy energy. So every once in a while, if something seems odd or out of out of character for you, take a look at the, the moon's activity and what its interaction is uh, with other planets in the heavens, because a lot of times it gives you kind of a sense of, oh, this is how this manifests for me. This is the kind of energy, and uh, I can look forward to, you know, next month as it goes through a, a somewhat similar series of interactions, uh, somewhat similar outcomes as far as my own personal energy up and down and, and sideways uh, is manifesting. <clears throat> yeah, especially with Jupiter and Cancer, it's pretty much the big storybook that's playing, are these feelings and where we go in them and how it connects with everything and how personal our emotions are connected to these different planetary positions. I mean, it's pretty powerful stuff. And, and this, this is the beginning of a powerful shift in our lives. We kind of had a little bit of a break there. Um, and, and this one, this one's, this one's starting another story. This one's revving up a new engine. And, um, I'm quite excited to see where this engine goes. I think, uh, Uranus coming online is really powerful stuff. Um, especially for me being a fire sign and I have a lot of planets in this area, you know, for me, I'm interested as, as really interested. And, um, I think this is a good time for a lot of people to, you know what, if there's something you want, fire that engine up, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is definitely a manifestation kind of energy. So if you do grab it, you'll find, uh, unexpected doors open in a very Uranian way. And uh, you'll find opportunities just popping up that uh, that come out of nowhere, seemingly. Uh, so yeah, it is something that uh, has a personal effect, and and you can definitely get the rewards of it. Yes. Well, what do the cards say? Yeah, let's take a look and see what the cards have to say. We're starting off with Friday, and as we move into the weekend, we got the Fool card. So. Um, this to me would indicate that uh, with the solid ground and Taurus energy, if there's something you've been wanting to do for a while, this is a perfect time frame to get out and do it. Uh, take the leap of faith. Uh, kind of, you know, dare yourself to do this or to do that and have fun with it over the, uh, the course of the weekend. Then by uh, the wind down on Sunday, Monday, we'll begin to see that... Uh, air energy really start to, you know, uh, build dramatically. Uh, Monday, we're going to definitely feel the effects of uh, the moon's entrance into Gemini, and uh, it will be uh, getting a lot of energy from that Mars position in Libra early on. So, and then, of course, it will be sextiling the Iranian energy as well as opposing the sun. So the first couple of days of next week are going to be uh, very flighty. Uh, people are going to be agitated. They're going to want to get out and do things and move around. A um, little bit of a spark midweek as we see that full moon, uh, the opposition going on between the sun and Gemini, or the sun and Sagittarius, the moon in Gemini. And 
again, you look at uh, the, the nature of those two signs. Gemini is all about communication, and uh, Sagittarius is wanderlust. It is very restless. It wants to go and learn in new environments. So very, very ziggy kind of week coming up. But by the end of the week, we'll discover that we've had uh, manifestations coming up that are big payoffs. You know, the Six of Pentacles. Uh, we've got uh, a new level of balance coming in. We're feeling a little bit more confident about the direction our life is going. And uh, with the sun getting ready to slide into Capricorn, we're going to have that, uh, that reinforced, grounded kind of energy for next weekend that's going to be very, very comfortable, I think, for everybody. So overall, a very interesting week. The cards are... Uh, they're telling us, you know, that a lot of uh, intimate uh, transformations are at hand, and you really, if if you're paying attention, you're going to get the rewards for your efforts. Yeah, it's almost like our our inner work that we've been doing for so long finally pays off. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, and and how appropriate it comes at Christmas time, you know. So yeah. we've got uh, Saint Nick arriving with a bag of goodies for us, and. Uh, after a few sparks, after a little bit of craziness with the, the Iranian Mars opposition, etc., then we're going to really feel like we're mobilizing and moving in a new direction with a lot of optimism and uh, just overall feeling of uh, well-being as we move into the actual holidays. Especially for the chart of America, you know, that's kind of coming up... Uh... And I think we'll do, you and I can maybe do a, a New Year's segment on what we might see in the American chart, because that chart's about to have some uh, interesting things happen. And that all yeah. happens here at the beginning of the year. So, And yeah, we're building up here for a, a holiday that I think most people will remember. But I want to say this, you know, with the South Node in Taurus and this North Node Scorpio Taurus energy, this is a weirder Christmas where... It's not so much I think about the physical gifts as much as the spiritual gifts and the emotional gifts this year. Um, if you spend a lot of money on somebody and they just don't emotionally get as attached to it as you would want, realize that's kind of the energy, that people are wanting more of the intimate connection this year with you than the gift, you know? Yeah, yeah people are definitely looking for... Uh... A deeper level of connectivity and they're wanting to finish off a lot of this karmic activity that the nodes are compelling us to address so again you know our own personal value system second house and uh, eighth house uh, sex and drugs and rock and roll so. <laughs> yeah it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be one of those years where it's like really go deep with people and you know, you can go buy something. You know, I just went and bought a brand new iPad. These things are expensive. And it's cool, but nothing can compete to the emotional feeling I have with you on this program or anybody in my life. You know, it's like, it's cool for a second, and then, you know, it kind of like loses its feeling. It's like, there's so many other deeper things with Saturn here and everything that we're really wanting to harbor in. Oh, absolutely. And it's it's definitely going to be a very emotional I think in cathartic in some ways Christmas season for a lot of people and uh, if you're willing to operate from the level of the heart and open your heart up it's going to bring some uh, some glorious moments that you will remember well into your dotage. Yeah, well, I look forward to next week as we'll do our Christmas horoscope and um, get ready also for the new year, which I think you and I should do a special with. Yes, I think that's on the horizon. We definitely can uh, maybe even have a two-part uh, the day before and the day after 2013-2014. So. Yeah, no, I'd love to. So, um, Well, thanks, Chris. It was so good, and uh, this was a great show. I'm really looking forward to getting this one out. So. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be a very affirming and validating and grounding uh, show for people for their holidays, because uh, if you go with the program, you're going to have a great holiday for you. Oh, yes. So, well, you have a good one, and I will uh, talk to you very soon, and make sure you stay warm.
Yes, you got your kitty cat to keep you warm. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm set. Okay, well, take care, David, and I look right. forward to chatting with you in one week. All right, Chris, I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye. Bye.